how much did you make, let's say, in the last last couple of months on average, or how much uh, did you make uh, this month so far? Or last month, what was your biggest month? Share a little bit the results that you that you had. Last month, we did about nine k total. In, okay, in the commission there. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Congratulations. So that's almost 10K. So 9K yeah. a month. Uh, that's awesome. That's really good. Super proud of you. Hey, what's going on? Marcus Dunk here. Uh, welcome back to another client success interview here with me. So today I have Tim here who has been absolutely crushing it with Remo closing over the last couple of months. So Tim, welcome. Uh, I'm super excited to have you here. There's a lot to unpack and uh, yeah, happy to have you here. Thank you. Glad to be here, Marcus. Awesome. Cool. Um, so yeah, I would say let's let's dive right in. Um, the most, uh, uh, yeah, the, the most curious question or, or the most, uh, um, yeah, what people want to know is how much did you make, let's say, in the last last couple of months on average? Or how much uh, did you make uh, this month so far or last month? What was your biggest month? Share a little bit the results that you that you had. Yeah, this month's been a little bit slower. Last month, we did about 9K total in, okay. in the commission there. This month's been a little bit slower, but I've been working on follow-ups more and try to catch up with people that, that haven't gotten to and, mm -hmm. and trying to work through some different techniques and some different ideas of, of shortening the close. A little bit of yeah. learning curve here. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Congratulations. So that's almost 10K. So 9K yeah. a month. Uh, that's awesome. That's really good. Super proud of you. Um, tell us a little bit now, of course, like someone's hearing that and they're like, okay, wow, that's amazing. But, but again, it, it hasn't been that of an easy ride, right? So let's, yeah. let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, let's start with what was your life before, um, we met, before you found out about remote closing and before you started learning inside of our community and the mentoring program. Yeah. I mean, as I'm a college student. So I'm going to school on the side and kind of working through through those things. Um, currently, I started school and then was going to college, had a side job, I guess a full-time job, yeah. was working in like construction rental in that field and just helping individuals to rent construction equipment. It's pretty much a, a labor intensive job, say 45, 50, 45, 50 hours a week. And so mm -hmm. it wasn't terrible, right? I was making, you know, 30 three thirty five hundred dollars a month it wasn't terrible it was getting by just kind of doing the the same old things and then i was going i'd go to school at night and then i saw a remote closing saw marcus on instagram and decided to hit him up i think i dm'd him and then got an appointment set i took it a call during my lunch break and while i was at work <laughs> and then i told this mail um, i believe on the call i was like oh yeah i'll get back to you and we ended up signing the deal and getting things done and and it took me, I think I got started in July of 20, mm -hmm. 2023 and I put it off for like two or three months. Then on like October, I actually started, started practicing October, November, hit it hard. December, I didn't do much, finished her up in January, um, did some outreach, ended up finding a, a solid company. Probably beginning of February, got onboarded, did like three or four different interviews, got onboarded um middle of february and then from there that first month was pretty killer so it was good okay all right cool so so you were a student and you had your side hustle and more of a yeah you could say traditional job yeah. a little bit more taxing probably how old are you by the way tim for for anyone who's curious about <laughs> 20 i'm 20 you're 20 dude like that's crazy. Like if that is not inspiring for any one of you guys watching, like, I don't know, I don't know what else, but uh, that's awesome. Okay. So you, you got in the game and then um, like, what was it like for you? Because you, it took you some time, right? Which is perfectly fine. Everyone yeah. is on their own journey. Right. Um, and it's also good to set expectations. Sometimes people come in and they expect, you know, to make 10 K a month uh, within the first month or something like that. Right. So, um, right. I mean, it's a yeah. skill. It's like, it's not, you have to develop the skill. It's not like oh, all of a sudden I'm making 10 K per month. Like you definitely have to develop the skill and put time toward it and, and use that time. And, and I put it off, right. I put it off from July clear till October. I paid, you know, I paid for, for a mentorship and then sat on it for three or four months. Yeah. Yeah. Why was that? Like now, I mean, looking back uh, or from where you at right now, looking back at that time, was it just that it wasn't the right time for you to begin with, or was something 
personal happening in your life that kind of draw the, your attention away or uh, like, is there any way you could pinpoint like, okay, why did yeah. it actually, not because you made it work at the end, right? Imagine right. you would have made it work like three months earlier that you put off or two months earlier, right? I right. Mean, <laughs> the, the, the I cost, the of, like, like the opportunity cost is just huge. That's what I'm saying, right? Right. I mean, overall, like I'm glad I went with the decision when I did. Um, and like I started in July, it was good. Um, I started school in September and August we were, see, I was in and out. We finished school. I got out of school in June and then I signed up in July and then August was a crazy month. I got married in September and started <laughs> school in September. Yeah. We started, we did a lot of stuff and then I put it off and, you know, when school started, I had a heavy school load and so I just didn't get time in. Um, my accountability partner in the program hit me up all the time. I was like, get your stuff done. Got it done. Worked yep. on it in October. And yeah, I mean, I'm glad that it happened when it did because I love the opportunity I'm with now. I love the, the team I'm working with. The guys are all way cool. Got more coaches, more mentors to grow and learn further from what Marcus yep. has already taught. And so it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, things just just play out the right way or if if i'm in contact with a student and they're you know maybe didn't land the opportunity that they really wanted to and they're kind of uh, going through that dip right it's always like hey man this opportunity wasn't yours to begin with uh you know as right. long as you stick around and you stick to it and i mean we can talk about that uh, and persistency here for sure as well a little bit in, in a second but as long as you stick to it um the piñata is gonna is gonna crack open right if you hit yeah. the piñata long enough right it, it is yeah. gonna crack open sooner or later right yeah definitely it'll definitely so, crack open so 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 what was your life like there were a lot of things like you got married <laughs> now so what was your life like immediately after you know um going through through the mentoring program after signing up after immersing yourself into this yeah world right um how was that for you yeah yeah. So when I started the mentorship, I quit my job. Um, I, I'm very fortunate. I have a lot of school, the, the school, the costs of school are taken care of, right? I'm not in a bad spot. My rent's covered as I keep my grades up and, and so I continue to go to school. So I'm, I'm in a really good spot. Um, when I started the mentorship, I didn't have to stress so much about getting work done. I could get some sleep, kind of work on the mentorship, work on school, kind of those things that happened. So I wouldn't say there was a huge life shift. There still mm -hmm. hasn't been. I haven't gone out and spent that money on a new place in, in Miami or spent Good. like, I haven't, I'm not like throwing my money out. Right. I, the goal is to, to get it into some investments, build, make my money work for itself. Cause ultimately yeah. remote closing is just a door to open more doors. Mm -hmm. It's, it's this, it's the path that allows me to have more time and allow me to put my money in better places. I'd say that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a stepping stone, right? Even if you at one point want to do your own business, your own offer, you have the money and you have the skill already. So it will be a lot easier than starting your own business just from scratch if you don't have yeah. any of them, right? Yeah, closing is, it's not necessarily selling. It's just closing the door on the opportunity with the person behind the door, like allow opening the door for someone and then you're closing the door behind them. You're allowing that person to, to take upon themselves a new opportunity or whatever it might be. I don't know. But it's really like closing. You're going to have to close someone throughout your entire life. You're going to have to sell them on who you are and close them that you're a cool guy or, you know, that you can actually do things that you can get stuff done. So it's, yeah. I looked at it as a necessary skill that I'm going to have to have. And that college won't teach me that I'm going to have to go pay someone to teach me. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, what would you say, um, like looking back at the mentoring program, the journey that you went through, the different stages of learning as well? And, and like, what would you say um, was the biggest lesson for you that you got from, from the mentoring program? I would say that it, whatever is happening outside of your life will affect the way that you're, you're closing. Practice 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 but if you're not consistent if you're not determined in your at, like daily life you mm -hmm. won't be consistent and determined in closing so i think that's kind of what i learned 
in the mentorship is if I wasn't diligent with my role plays, if I wasn't diligent in practicing and working on closing in a script and, and actually getting someone from point A to point B and making them feel that emotion and, and helping them to, to just want to be there. Um, if you're not determined, not diligent, not consistent, then you won't, you won't be, if you're not confident, you won't have confidence on closes. So that's yeah. what I learned the most through the mentorship is you, you have to be a confident, determined person and to, you can get that way, right? The mentorship helps you get that way. Yeah. What I always say is keep the small promises with yourself, right? If you keep the small promises with yourself, you're stacking up that confidence now, yeah, or, um, yeah, just, just closing or what we do is an opportunity to really grow as a person. And it goes hand in hand with personal development, right? Because yeah. let's say, uh, what you said with confidence, right? Okay. I'm not closing the deal because I'm lacking confidence. So it forces you to reflect back. Why am I lacking confidence? Like, what am I doing in my life or not doing in my life right now that I don't have the confidence in myself? And how could I manage to build that up? And if you then start developing you as a person and your confidence, you can take that over immediately and apply that to, to your skill, right? Which you will get compensated for, right? right? So bottom line, you're basically getting paid to develop yourself. With closing. Yeah. That's how I look at it, right? It's just personal Definitely. development, right? If you learn more about yourself, who you are as a person, how you operate, you automatically will become more authentic in your calls. If you're more yeah. authentic in your calls, your closing rate is going to go up, right? Because authenticity is something that people are craving, especially, you know, the times that we're living in, like just someone who's authentic that can relate to, right? Um, okay. Uh, what would you say, like, what did we help you with the most? Like where, where are you at now? Um, honestly, I would say the practice, you know, the RCM builds a community to practice in, right? I mean, a lot of the things, I mean, you can go learn sales from a lot of different places, a lot of different people, but the RCM teaches you a framework that is like a general framework. And when I got into this new opportunity, we shifted the framework. The framework changed a little bit, but it will with every opportunity. So it's, I think it, it builds like a base oper or base framework. And then also additionally, it's, it builds a community to practice in. And so you, you always can get on and say, Hey, I need to practice today. Who can practice? And you'll get five or six, 10, 20, 30 people respond and say, yeah, I, I need to practice today as well. What time? Yeah. So it's, that was nice. That's what was nice about the, the community. Yeah. So the people, the network, the community, like uh, you having uh, yeah people there to practice with that are on the same journey, you know, that might go through similar challenges. Um, gotcha. Okay. Tell a little bit about what does your life look like right now? Like when do you get up? Uh, what do you do throughout your day? When do you take calls? Like, is it right now for you all go, 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 go? Or is it more like you kind of taking a step back and you, you're taking some days off? Like how, like, how is that for you currently? Yeah. I mean, a lot of my life didn't change I mean, when I started closing as far as like my living circumstances, as far as like the times I get up, go like start working. The only difference is I work from home. So it's nice to have an office if you can, but I work from my living room right now. I live in the basement in Utah. Like we're renting a basement, going to school, the work from a living room. And, you know, I'm kind of a pain in the butt in my wife's, my wife's butt, but uh, just being in the way all the time. But right now I'd say typically I wake up around seven and then hop on calls around eight. And then I'm on calls. I just have a calendar. And if, a, if I have someone no show, I'll go hit like my follow-ups, go text them, call other mm -hmm. leads hit a list outbound dial if I have time. Um, yep. And then I usually close from 8 a.m. to 4 or 5 p.m. normally. And then mm -hmm. I like last night. So I took a call at 11 o'clock at night just because it was the only available time the guy could take a call. And so I took one at, let's see, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So mm -hmm. I, yesterday was crazy from 7.30 to, to almost midnight kind yep. of working through some deals there but so it's crazy i mean i i kind of like the crazy it's been fun today I'm, i was off a little bit earlier kind of chilled out a little bit trying to catch up some follow-ups 
you know, following up is just as important as finding new leads, sometimes more, I'd say more important. And then reaching out, texting, and then, yeah, it's, I mean, that's a day to day. I work some Saturdays. I get to choose if I work Saturdays. I don't work yep. Sundays, just Monday through Friday. Try and work as often as I can. And it still okay. gives me time to do things I want. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, so of course, uh, before when you're working with that construction business, right, as a, as a side hustle job uh, next next to university, uh, how many hours did you put into that? How many hours did you put into closing? What's the different in, difference in income? How much more money do you make right now in less time? <laughs> Even yeah. though it might sound you don't have a lot of time, like I mean, uh, you're getting compensated for the time. So uh, that that's another choice you you, you want to make, right? So for example. Uh, I assume you or me as well, if I find something where it's like, okay, wow, I can you know make a lot more in less time. I would go all in with that, right? I don't care. I would just, you know, go all yeah. in. And then there are others who say, no, I'm fine. Like just working part-time or a couple of hours and I'm good with a couple of grand per month, right? As long as I have more free time. So there are two different uh, points of view that people sometimes have, right? So how was that for you? How was that with the construction job? How much did you yeah. make there? Yeah. So with the construction job, I mean, it was a good job for what it was, right? I was, I was probably, so my time there, I'd wake up around five and then I had to be able to work by six and I would work from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then I'd go to school from five to nine at night. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot. I was getting paid 3000 a month after taxes. Yeah. Um, sometimes 3500 if I had overtime. Now, um, let's see, I just pulled up my actual stats. So last month, I did over 200 hours on my calendar, mm -hmm. like on calendar where like people can book calls I had over 200 hours scheduled. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I was, it was a lot of hours. So I'm still doing 50, 40, 50, 60 hours, but I chose to do so. I don't have yeah. to. I chose to do so. And I choose to take calls after hours. I choose to to study on my own, whatever it might be. Yeah, and I, yeah. and I'm compensated for it, right? I did, I did nine thousand commission last month. Yeah, so it's significantly higher. There's more opportunities, more networking. I get to talk mm -hmm. to lots of individuals. Um, yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, it's kind of you you because you're relatively new to this as well, right? Um, and you you're already crushing it. Uh, it's still like you're getting almost paid to get better and to learn, right? Or or to take these calls, getting in more reps, you know, like yeah. especially at the beginning. And now you're getting compensated for it, which motivates you even more. And then if you have someone who's a no-show, you could easily just pull up another call, listen to it, reflect on it. How can you improve? And you, you know, you get some juice out of that time as well, right? So actually talking about that. Definitely. Where like... What do you think, how will your life look like uh, in, in three years from now as a result of you actually choosing to learn remote closing and also the experience that you had inside of our, our community and the program? Yeah, I mean, I have, I have goals set for three years from now, you know, a year, two years, three years from now. I don't know what it will look like, but if I continue down the path that I'm on and, and the trajectory is the same, I mean, mm -hmm. be up in six figures a year, six you know, and then put money into some investments, some real estate and, and really build from there. You know, three years from now, the goal is to, to not be living in a basement, right? Um, hopefully I've finished college. I'm still going to school and that's not necess Like it's not a necessity, but I enjoy going to school and I enjoy learning and I want to be there. Mm -hmm. Continue to go to school. Um, the goal is to have graduated by then be out, um, own a couple pro a couple real estate properties and have some doors renting those out as well as you know have some month to month basis um passive income going there's lots of opportunities out there and I'm actually fortunate with the company I work with they have their own passive income opportunities that I can get on so mm -hmm. 3 years from now I mean I don't want to be you know, that guy who, who went and bought a mansion and a bunch of cars and a bunch of dirt bikes and a bunch of like fun stuff. I'd rather travel with my wife and, you know, start a small family a couple of years down the road and 
yeah. just live a humble little life, but live comfortably and, and definitely travel and do what I want to. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, the experiences. Like I always say your experiences, you can take them everywhere. You don't need to pay for luggage or anything like that. No one can take them from you. Right. <laughs> so I'm I'm yeah. on some share with you. <laughs> okay, good. Um yeah, then also another thing you mentioned, like passive income there. So for me, I'm always like when when people tell me, hey, I want to make passive income, I'm always like, oh, man, come on. Like, what's your active income look like right now? Yeah. So some people, they want to yeah. start with the, with the passive income, but they don't want to, you know, learn a skill that gives them peace of mind, you know, happen what happens. You always can rely on your on your skill. Right. But getting your active income up and then channeling that income into like more investment opportunities, getting some doors, you know, getting involved with real estate and, and that type of stuff that you also mentioned before. Right. Um, so they kind of get it. They, they flip it around. They, they're getting it wrong. Right. <laughs> so one one skill is definitely how yeah. to make money. One skill is how to keep money. And then the third skill is, OK, how do you how do you have your money make you more money, which is kind of the passive yeah. income. Right. But if you only have like a hundred bucks to your name, don't even think about how can I make passive income? Like, no, your focus should be make active income, get your hands right. dirty to someone who likes to work hard like yourself or like myself. Uh, right. And in a nine to five, you, you're capped with your income. If you do something like remote closing, a skill like that, you remove the cap. If you're a hard worker, you're putting yourself into that. You're going to get something out of it. You're going to get compensated for that. Right. Like, like in your case, for example. Definitely. I definitely think it's important to like, it's okay if you become a remote closer and you, you enjoy just setting appointments, right? Setting appointments, like there's, you have to find the niche that you enjoy, right? I, yeah. I mean, the opportunity I'm in now wasn't the first opportunity. I mean, I, I wanted several different opportunities, but I ended up getting into like a setting role <laughs> and I didn't like it at all, but it was a good, it's good to get started, get reps in until you can get to the opportunity you want. So don't just turn down opportunities left and right. No, it's not the perfect opportunity. You just got to take what comes and work for another, right? I mean, there's, so you can take that cap off. You can really see high earnings potential. Yeah. What well, was like your, like, uh, of course, we also have people from our community, community watching this as well. So uh, do you want to share a little bit kind of what, what was your, mentality of you know getting on your first opportunity how long did it take you to get on your first opportunity um and then you know how did you kind of work your way into a position where you are right now again you can be as detailed yeah. or, or uh, uh, vague as you want but i'm sure there's some value to unpack there's some experience that you that you could share you know i think outreach is the hardest part of closing um trying to find an actual opportunity um, I didn't have very much success over Instagram or over Facebook. Had a really hard time. So that's where the community came in handy, right? Marcus has a network. He's he's constantly putting feels out there for who needs closers or or other client closers are bringing in opportunities. And so that's where the community comes in handy. So pay attention to those and take it like jump on them ASAP. But I think you know, I started outreach. I think I graduated from the program or got my certificate of, of closing. I'd say beginning of, end of December, beginning of January. And mm -hmm. I gave myself to the end of January to find an opportunity, no matter what. I was like, I will. And I had a hard time the first couple of weeks. I was pretty down. And, and then I think Mark, one of Marcus's, uh, I think it was Caleb, one of his uh, client success coaches there or success coaches, um, he reached out and was like, dude, keep your head up. Just, it's a numbers game. So like, the more numbers he's like, so he actually told me, he's like, I want you to do 30, 30 outreach videos today. Send 30 today. It's like, and then hit me back. He's like, I don't even want a response until you send out 30. Yeah. And so I went and I sent out 30 and he was, it was way cool. Like I, I had a couple and then, then I got an opportunity in, in my DMs and I got an opportunity from the, the mentorship. I didn't get anything from the 30 I sent out, but. I put it out there, right? I put it out there. And then the next couple of weeks, I was like, okay, I'm going to dedicate all the time I have available and an available time and time that I'm willing to make available is different, but I tried to make all the time available or all the time I had available to like finding an opportunity. And I found one like January 31st and set up an interview. They passed me along to the next interview, which got scheduled a week later. And then I got through that interview and 
then schedule the one the next week after that. So then I had, I had three different interviews, got on the opportunity. They onboarded me and I got thrown into the fire. They gave me a list of 500 leads and they said, hit it. See if you can close a deal. I ended up closing a deal and they put me on the calendar for a couple times a week. And I closed another deal and they put me on the calendar for more. I closed another deal and they put me on the calendar for more. So I'd say, you know, to answer your question, long story short here, Marcus, is like it's a numbers game. And it's not not necessarily just a numbers game. There's a skill to closing, but putting yourself out there and showing someone that you're willing to work, put in the nitty gritty and follow up and say, I haven't heard anything for the last couple of days. Am I good to get going? Like something like that. It's it's a mindset. Just get over yourself, put in the work and get it done. That's that's what, what was I would for say. you that's very good. What was for you like that one that one thing that kept you going? Like was it uh was it my team? Uh was it uh some some other thing that, that like why did you like why didn't you just like throw in a towel? Like why didn't you just quit and and that difficult time? Because um like you said, it is a very tense time. It is sometimes where again you 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 want to get on your first offer, you're lacking experience in some cases. It is just a difficult process. So what was your like what kept you going? Um the ROI. I, I I made an investment into a mentorship and I needed the ROI minimum. I was like, at least I will make back what I invested into this program, no matter what. I will keep going until I make back. And, and I think it was like it's either this or I go find a nine to five job, which is okay. It's okay to do so, right? If it's not for you, it's not for you. But it was it was either this, I you know, I keep closing, I keep working on getting an opportunity, or I go back to a construction job where you know I'm tired. I mean, I was I was falling asleep driving. I was so tired. Like I just couldn't do it. And so I was like, it was this or that, right? Pick my pick my poison, right? Keep going or, or you know, drink the poison. And yeah. so looking forward as well and looking forward helps write out your goals, build a vision board, put things down. When you write out your goals and, and build a ladder on how to get there, put plan and an action. Okay. If I, if I get an opportunity by January 31st, I get onboarded by February 15th. Then that gives me 10 more months to make a hundred thousand dollars. Great. That's my goal this year. Six figures. If I make $100,000 this year, that's my main goal. Great. It's just build steps. In February, I need to make $12,000. And then March, I need to make... Or February, I need to make $3,000 or something as well. But that's how I, I laid out my goals. And then March, I need to make $8,000. And then February or April, whatever month comes after March, right? Um, I need to make $12,000 and then fifteen, and then yeah, just upwards from there. Right. So yeah. that's laying it out, making a plan for it. And you know, you knew how to get there. You had a rough idea how to approach it uh, in different yeah. scenarios. Yeah. And it's, and knowing that it's possible helped too. Right. When I, when I got on with the opportunity, I was like, man, these guys, like, these guys are actually making like $50,000 a month. Every guy on my team is making over $30,000 a month. Like it's there. The opportunity is there. It's just whether or not I'm hungry enough to go get it. So I decided yeah. I was hungry. Yeah, absolutely. Hungry and skilled, right? Hungry and skilled enough. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How, like, how do you look at that? For example, someone who uh, is my watching this and like, well, I just going to be, you know, learning this for free on YouTube and all of that. Uh, you know, I'm, I always say it's possible, right? But uh, let's say if you have never really heavily invested in yourself, I, I remember that right now because you said, well, what kept me going was I made an investment to myself, right? Yeah. So um, what do you think is my challenge if you have never invested heavily into yourself or someone who says, hey, I'm going to learn it for free and then I try to just replicate what Tim is doing? Um, what would you say to someone like that? To someone who says they can go learn it on their own? Is that your question? Yes, and then yeah. I just replicate basically what you just said. Like, and they've never heavily invested into themselves, high ticket. I would say, um, find find a mentor. Um, you can you can totally go learn. <clears throat> you can totally go learn on your own. You can go find books. You can go read. You can go study. You can 
I mean, Marcus, you learned it on your own, right? You, you took that step. Oh, I had mentors you, too. You know, I had mentors too. Right? You found, found mentors. Now, that's a part of learning it on your own. You can learn it on your own, but why spend six, eight months of time learning it on your own when you can go find a mentor and get it done in three? I mean, that's, that's, the, that's what I would say is, is if you can use mentors, you'll speed up your time and your opportunity cost no longer disappears. Is your opportunity cost of waiting and doing it on your own just gets greater and greater and greater and you're just losing money. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you something anyways, right? Whether you wait and it costs you time to get to your goal or whether you invest into yourself and shorten the time uh, for you. And then again, it doesn't mean, okay, if I have a mentor now, hey, next month I'm going to be super successful. No, it might still take time for you to get the lessons to sink in and, and really understand and, and implement on it right one big thing that i also believe you can absolutely do that on your own you can study for free like you can educate yourself the biggest challenge that i see is if you are on a call with someone and you want to go into remote closing and specifically you know work with coaches consultants agencies service providers uh, if you ask for a big investment but you have never invested heavily into yourself you don't really know how it feels to be on the other side, what the other person yeah. is going. So uh, that's always where I'm like, okay, yeah, you can start with it. But And then some people say, yeah, but I bought a car. That's not the same. same. You're not investing into yourself. Like it's literally you invested into yourself, into learning something, to skill, into a mastermind group, into, into something, right? Right. Yeah, I agree um, fully. I mean, it's it's... If you're going to ask for money from someone for an investment or for something, you have to invest in yourself. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. Um, what would you say to someone who uh, understands, let's say, the, the value of a mentorship, investing to themselves, and they might not be 100% sure about uh, the mentoring program, they're considering joining, but they don't really know yet 100%, hey, Am I able to pull this off? Will I find an opportunity? Uh, they might be asking, you know, what are the things that I will be selling? Like, what would you say to someone who is a little bit on the edge and, and maybe not 100% uh, sure yet? I think when it comes logically, right? If you're looking at this very, very logically of, okay, you know, exactly those things that you just mentioned, right? I don't know if I can do this. So it's, it's, well, you put in the time. If you'll put in the time, if you can guarantee to yourself that you'll put in the time and you'll make at least a little effort, then the opportunities will come and you will close. You will practice. I mean, if you can guarantee yourself that you'll put like an hour a day even. And if you're, if you're someone that says, I don't have time, it's you don't want to make the time. You can always carve out time in your schedule. And it's just, just a matter of when you priorities. have that time. But if priorities, right? Yeah, priorities your priorities. So if your priority is making 10, 15, $20,000 a month, you can carve out an hour a day and you can learn the skill and the, set, and set the necessary things that go with closing, right? As far as like connecting with individuals, as far as connecting with someone over Zoom, it's a lot different than in person. Um, becoming a remote closer, if you're right on the fence there though, um, I mean, to be, keep it short here, right? Is uh, is if you if you're right there on the fence, and it's it all comes down to can I do this? It's just about taking that leap of faith and trusting yourself. If you can't trust yourself, then to make a financial decision to better your future, you'll probably be stuck in the same spot. I mean, worst worst case scenario, you stay where you're at, and nothing changes, and you hate your life for the next twenty years. Worst case scenario, <laughs> or you take a leap. It's up to you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Worst case scenario, at least then you also you know what you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, so, okay. Like, well. Yeah. Go for it. I was just gonna say. I mean, worst case scenario is it taking the leap to like try the mentorship. The worst case scenario really is you don't do anything at all. You'll never do anything. You'll never change. You'll you'll stay where you're at. You'll never build. You'll never trust yourself. And it's you'll never make money. I and mean, it's if that's you. By all means, enjoy. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah, the, the cost of inaction is just very high, right? Of, of you not pulling the trigger, you're not making decision is, you know, you 
saying yes and you're making a decision to keep staying stuck at the situation that you are right now. Yeah. Um, so I, one more thing that I that I just remember right now that I, that I wanted to talk with you about is um, uh, also with, for example, when you start looking to remote closing and all of that, was your your fiance back then or your now wife or so your family what did they think about you wanting to do something online your remote closing and all of that how was that and then how was it after you now basically like showing results right yeah i think it's i mean before like i knew i wasn't going to stay in the job i was at um and so i i did it i just did it Right. And it wasn't really something we talked about. Um, at the time, she was my fiance. Um, she was kind of like, yeah, go for it. Like, it's your, I mean, it's your decision. Like, it's going to be your time. Like, ultimately, it's your choice. And then I did it. And, you know, she pushed me every time I put it off. She pushed me to kind of work on it. Like, okay, have you got your assignments done? Like, that's how we're going to make money. Like, that is our income. Like, you better get on it. Right. And then yeah. once we, we got it done, she helped push me to, to get an opportunity. Once I got the opportunity, we celebrated and she was super happy and excited for me. And now, you know, she's, she's very glad, you know, we're making good money. We're making solid, solid income and it's going to get better from here. And, you know, she hears me on my calls every day and we'll talk about them sometimes. She's like, man, who did you talk to today? That sounded like <laughs> an interesting conversation. I yes. don't believe me. It was, you know, and you know, we've, but it's, yeah, I mean, she's, she's glad I took the opportunity. She's glad of where we're at. And, you know, she'd definitely like me to spend more time with her and, and I need to cut out some more time in my schedule and be a little bit better of a husband, but, um, she's proud of where we're at and, and grateful for where we we're going. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you have a partner who's on board with, with what you want to do or in your case, right. Or in my case, if you have a partner who is like supportive, uh, that's like half the battle is already won, right? And yeah. then, uh, you know what you're now saying, okay, I need to carve out more time. There's seasons in life. And for you, this season right now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, the way how I look at it is right now, it's just you You need to go, 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 reps, 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 focus on what you're doing right now, getting better at it. And then, uh, you know, then you could slowly dial it down a little bit, move it around. Yeah, uh, you're more seasons clo season closer then, so uh, there there will be a lot more yeah opportunities and freedoms as well coming your way. Where you can just say, hey, you know, you know what? Today I just want to spend time with, with my girl, right? So um, yeah, yeah, Definitely. I'm excited I mean, for you. Man. Exciting right. times. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm 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 super stoked and of where I'm going and and at the very least, I mean, I don't want to close forever. I, I don't want to be doing remote closing forever, but it's the greatest stepping stone to get to where I need it's to be. It gets you to the, ne it, it prepares you for the next thing. Absolutely. And exactly. it gets you, right. And if you look at it, it's uh, compared to all the other business models out there. I mean, or even if you start your own business, it is the, it is a lean and mean, right? You don't have a lot of overhead costs. You just need yourself, a laptop, internet connection. You don't need to deal with delivery or nothing like that. Right, you don't need to. You don't need to worry about okay, where are my calls coming from? Ideally, the business is scheduling these calls into your into your calendar that you set available. So there is really, it's not that complex yeah, compared to let's yeah. just say an Amazon business where you deal with product selection, importing, certificate certifications, right, warehouse storage, cash flow, inventory, all of that stuff. Yeah. Right? Uh, so it's just a lot more complex. Uh, if you if you start an agency, uh, okay, then you have to do delivery and marketing as well. If you do the closing, right? It's it's just a lot. It's just a lot more heavy lifting. So uh, totally agree with what you said there. It's 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 a good stepping stone, getting in a game, now uh, and uh, and then building onto that, building onto that, right? I agree, hundred percent. All right, Tim. Good, good chat. Um, I mean, is there anything else that you want to share uh you want to mention before we wrapping things up here anything that I don't, that we might got or <laughs> yeah i think i mean uh, overall a mentor is getting a mentor will speed up your timeline no matter what um finding the mentor that's right for you is your choice right and it, it really is but if if someone learn from someone who's currently doing it that's, I mean, that's really it. If someone's currently doing it, learn from them. Uh, 
take that leap of faith, trust yourself. Good stuff. It's fun. I like closing. You can meet lots of people every day. Yeah. And interesting people. I have yes. so many interesting uh, avatars on yeah. calls throughout the last years. It's, it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's very fun. <laughs> awesome. And good. Yeah. Tim, uh, thank you so much for, yeah. Coming here, having a chat with me, talking about your story a little bit. Right. And, uh, yeah, if you are still watching this and you are thinking about, Hey, is this something for me? Is this not something for me? Uh, we're going to put a free training down below. Uh, if the link works, that means the training is still available. You can just sign up with your email and then you will get it, the training directly into your inbox. Uh, and you can learn a bit more about remote closing and how we here might be able to help you as well. Get some great results like we did here with our man, Tim. All right. So, uh, yeah, I see you in the next one.